Needle stick injuries are a common occupational hazard among all healthcare workers, including you. It's estimated that 600,000 to 800,000 needle stick injuries occur per year in the United States alone. In the Oral Health Center here in IMU, we have had a total of 20 reported injuries from the year 2012 to 2016. There may have been many more unreported incidents. But what is a needle stick injury and how can it be prevented? Needle stick injury is defined as an injury caused by contaminated sutures, hollow bore needles, or any sharp instrument that has broken the skin, causing bleeding. Here are some of the ways it can happen. Scaling, giving local anesthesia, suturing, endodontic treatment, passing instruments, wiring. It's not just dentists or dental students who are affected. All healthcare workers are at risk even those not in direct contact with patients. For example, a used needle that is not disposed of correctly may injure the workers that handle the waste. Why should we be worried? An injury from a contaminated needle exposes healthcare workers to blood-borne pathogens that can cause serious infections. The most commonly transmitted pathogens are hepatitis B virus, HBV, hepatitis C virus, HCV, Human Immunodeficiency Virus, HIV. Of these three pathogens, only HBV can be vaccinated against. HBV has the highest risk of transmission, ranging from 6 to 30 percent, while HCV and HIV have an estimated risk of transmission of 1.8 percent and 0.3 percent, respectively. So how do we prevent needle stick injuries? Many can be prevented with 1. Safety measures. In the oral health center, this includes using the syringe holder and recapping your scalar tip. 2. Education, training, and awareness. 3. Work practice controls. Disposal of sharps in sharp spin. Passing exposed sharps using a tray. Proper technique for procedures. All healthcare workers should also make sure that they are vaccinated against hepatitis B to minimize the risk of infection in the case of an injury. What can you do if it happens? 1. Wash the injury with soap and water immediately and dress the wound. 2. Take detailed information about the injury, including when and how it happened and whether the instrument was visibly contaminated with blood. Three. Report the incident to a superior and complete an incident report form. 4. Request for an immediate blood test for both you and the patient involved. 5. Follow up with a medical practitioner for further investigations and counseling. If there is known high risk for infection, your healthcare provider or an emergency room doctor can provide post-exposure prophylaxis. Post-exposure prophylaxis for HIV infection must be started within 72 hours after exposure. But the sooner you start, the better. Every hour counts. The need for post-exposure prophylaxis for HBV is determined by your immune status to HBV. Check your antibody levels with a healthcare provider to see if you need it. Remember, it doesn't take much to prevent an injury. Stay sharp. Avoid sharps.